I'm Maria Teresa Sartori. I live here in Venice. I was born in Venice. And I studied at university here in Venice, German language and literature. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, I took uh, um, courses at the Art Academy, uh, drawing courses and also uh, graphic courses. And, uh, and when I was in Milan, in fresco courses, uh, I had always had different um, interests and I tried to work uh, in a combination. For example, my uh, thesis when I studied German language was about uh, the uh, psychology of art in uh, um, Freud. And I made, for example, for this literature work also some uh, engravings. I can say that my research fields are uh, human behavior, uh, empirical scientific approach, and uh, um, music in connection with language, or language in connection with music. Yeah? And uh, um, I read a lot of uh, uh, science books, but my comprehension is really very limited. And, uh, uh, and I read science books as if they were poetry books. Yes, they are, they are for me really a source of inspiration. And I think um, because I don't understand uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, uh, to be in this dimension where I just uh, partial, so my, my comparison is really very partial, yeah? And so I am in this dimension where so free associations can emerge, yes, gradually, yeah? And I think that my ignorance uh, is very important, <laughs> yeah, in this sense. And also in music, because I cannot read notes, yeah, I cannot read scores. Uh, for me, it's just uh, beautiful uh, drawings, yeah. And I have to find my way, yeah, to, uh, um, to comprehend things, yeah. I said something about the empirical uh, scientific approach, yeah. And, uh, um, these drawings are made by the wind. Yeah? Uh, do you know there is the anemometer? The anemometer is a, is a tool with three cups, yes, and uh, um, it moves pushed by the wind, of course, yeah? And it, uh, uh, it is um, a measurement tool uh, for the speedness and uh, the intensity of the wind. Yes, it's a very scientific and meteorological tool. And it has cables, yes, to transmit the information. And uh, I uh, elaborate this tool uh, in a very, um, I transformed it in a very mechanical and empirical thing because it is a technological instrument, but I transformed it, it in, a, in a mechanical tool. I just cut the cables and for each cap, I put some uh, threads, um, some hull threads, and then I put this anemometer, which is a little thing, mm -hmm. on the paper. This is the paper. You just think of a white paper, yeah? I put it in the center. Mm -hmm. And then I put also some um, charcoal powder, yeah? Always the same quantity. So the protocol is quite strict, yeah? Okay. And quite rigorous, yeah? And I put it for five minutes into the wind. And then different drawings, so these are uh, made by the, by the wind, not by me. Yeah, I just uh, elaborate this uh, um, uh, this tool. Yeah, and you can see different configurations. And a concept that it's important to me is that configurations are always different. Uh, variations are infinite, of course. Yeah, but not not all variation variations are possible. Hmm? This is a concept that I uh, occur, care a lot. The effort is to be objective. Yes, there is an effort towards uh, mechanical objectivity, yeah? because I do anything. Yeah? I just prepare the thing and I put it outside. Yeah? And everything is mechanical, not done by, by me. Uh, but I've transformed this tool it is in, in a way that is becomes mechanical, but also it is imbued with my subjectivity, of course, yeah? And then I like to be in this dimension, this field between objectivity and subjectivity, yeah? And this, this creates a tension, yeah? And what is important to me is to go towards objectivity, which is never achieved, yeah? With this tool, of course, yeah?
I work also with sound and with videos, and so it's sound, as I told before, so sound in connection with languages, with music, um, so I'm very interested in that. For example, where foreigners uh, say, oh, Italian language is so beautiful, it's so the melody, the sound, and so we, as mother tongue, we cannot really understand what they mean, yes, because we cannot perceive our mother tongue as a pure sound, because the meaning has the upper hand, yeah? And so to make possible this experience to, to perceive the, um, the mother tongue as pure sound, so I elaborate language in this way. So I uh, choose a poem, Giacomo Leopardi, Canto Notturno di un Pastore Errante. I've changed the position of the consonants in each word. For example, the word uh, forse, forse means maybe in Italian, eh? forse becomes to sorfe. Sorfe could be an Italian word, yes, because phonological it, it could be, but it means anything, yeah? And, but it has the same sound, forse, sorfe, yeah? Absolutely the same sound, the same length, yeah? The same accent, everything is the same, yeah? And then I have uh, um, maintained uh, ri the rhyme of the poem, the, uh, the metric, um, the accent of each word, the length of each word, and just change the position of each consonant. So the result is something completely um, meaningless, but absolutely familiar too, yeah? Because each word could be an Italian word, yeah? And, uh, and then an actor um, reads this transformed poem without a meaning, as it had the original meaning, yeah? It is not easy, absolutely, for an actor to do that, not for, for anybody, so you need an actor to do that. You need a, a person that um, uh, has the professionality to do that, yeah? And, uh, and then I have worked with other 14 languages, yeah? Not me, of course, but I contacted uh, different foreigners. They have chosen uh, a poem. Foreigners, actors, so it was not easy to find 14 <laughs> Um, different actors, so Japanese, Arab, uh, Spanish, German, etc. Yeah? Um, I've read this poem as it had the original meaning. So what is important to me is this our first approach was when we were children, yeah? when we were uh, really very, very um, uh, small, um, was a musical approach because we couldn't understand what the adults said, but this sound, this melody, the rhythm and melody of our mother tongue was, uh, was to us already familiar. Hmm? And this is this first approach. We have lost it forever, forever. It's not possible for us, yes? And this work is the attempt to make uh, possible this experience, yes? As mother tongue, to perceive our mother tongue as pure sound, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, I can show this small book because the <coughs> So th th this work have, uh, has different way to, uh, to be heard, yeah? But just show here, for example, here you have the, uh, the person who worked on the poem, who chose the poem, who uh, transformed the poem. Here you have the actor, yeah? Here in the book, you, ha you can read the original. So for the English, you have the to be or not to be, yeah? <laughs> and then the transformed poem. Aye, rare's the tub. Rough in slat thip, what ams coy maim, in way shuff haffled foff this courtle moil. Rough woe wheeled bower the scops and worms of fime. The os repwars prong the mould parns ton coonly that dangs and pass pied level the dews lally the lin size so of fice soft in the earth's pern of methy and parrot of the one earthy cates. Hen we shim health height, Miss Myatus quake, with a wear bin cod. Woe, wold beardell's far grew want taunt, a tweeze de run a leery wife. It's completely meaningless, yeah? <laughs> this is the point, yeah? <laughs> and so there is also, of course, an irony, but it's also a very serious thing, yeah? Because it's about us, about our something that we have lost forever, yeah? And um, yes, it deals with the music, yeah, that we have lost, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I was born in Lido, not in Venice, huh? which is important to me because um, Lido is a, is a real island. Venice is connected to the mainland with a bridge. Yeah? And when you are in Venice, you can reach uh, every place just walking because there are a lot of bridges. Yeah? In Lido, so I had to take the boat to go to school. Yeah? And uh, Lido is much more exposed to the natural phenomenon. Yeah? Wind, fog, uh, there are trees, for example, uh, and Venice is really a stone city, yeah? And I'm very bound to nature, so, and uh, this long island between lagoon and sea is important to me. I think it has, uh, mm, for my way of being, uh, it, it was important, yeah, to be born uh, there. Um, and now, yes, as an artist, maybe, uh, so to live in Venice, because my studio is here in Murano, Venice, and uh, I mean, it's important because Lido without Venice uh, would be anything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, Venice is very, uh, it's small, but international. Yeah, because we have really a lot of uh, the possibility, uh, the opportunity to meet a lot of people that come here, um, people of contemporary art, but not only. Yeah, and uh, I think we are lucky. Yeah, I think we are really lucky to, to be here.